Hello everybody and welcome to our channel. We've got another how-to video and uh, it's how to make homemade soap. I'm actually making pine tar soap today. And before I get started, I wanted to thank my dear friend and mentor Bonnie. Thank you so much, sweetie, you know, for teaching me everything. And uh, couldn't have done this without you. So this video is dedicated to you. Love you. Okay, now first of all, you're going to be working with lye. So you need to wear long sleeves, you know, something covering your neck. You need eye protection. And you, if you're doing this outside like I am, you want to make sure there's no wind blowing because it can blow. It can blow on you. You need gloves. Lye is a very caustic substance. And so what we're going to do here... So we're going to get all gloved up here. Okay. Now, I've got a little silicone mold in a little wooden frame. And we're only making a two-pound batch today, which is kind of small. But just mostly to see, you know, the basics of how to do this. And I have vinegar. And you want to keep this nearby in case lye splashes on your skin because you will need to pour it on because it burns. And like I said, it can burn right through your skin. It's a very caustic substance. Now, I use the sodium hydroxide food grade microbeads. I like this particular one. Now, there are many recipes for soap online. I watched a lot of videos on YouTube. And so you can get recipes all over the place. Uh, the pine tar soap recipe I found online. I don't remember what website it was. And then I just tweaked it a little bit, you know, to my needs. But you need some distilled water. And I get the Bickmore pine tar because it does not contain creosote and it's 100% pure. And for our recipe, we're going to need two ounces which I have right here. I'm gonna need some plastic wrap. I'll show you what that's for. And I use an electric hand blender for blending my oils. Now, I've already put my oils together and I've got them over here on the grill and they're cooling right now. But I just used 12 ounces of coconut oil, six ounces of either canola oil or soybean oil, sunflower oil, any kind of oil is fine. Six ounces of hemp oil, four ounces of shea butter, four ounces of olive oil, and like I said, two, two and a half ounces of the pine tar. Now I'll show you how we're going to mix our lye. This recipe calls for 10.21 ounces of distilled water. I can also use our water out of the faucet because we're on a well, so we don't have chlorine. That may mess up your soap recipes. So. You know, most soap makers recommend distilled water. Now, I do recommend plastic or stainless steel items because if you put lye in any aluminum or anything, it's going to, you know, discolor it. Um, you can use glass. Okay, so I've got 10.21 ounces, thereabouts, here water in my measuring cup. Now you never want to pour the water into your lye because there could be an explosion. So you get your water and then you carefully measure out your lye. Now this particular recipe calls for 4.57 ounces. So you measure out your lye. I've got it in my little plastic container here. And you just want to pour this in slowly so it doesn't splash. Now this is going to get very hot. And yes, there is fumes. So that's why I am doing this outside because I actually have a lung problem. So you just want to stir this. And like I said, this is going to get very hot. And you just want to mix this together until your microbeads or flakes crystals, whatever you are using, are dissolved. Now, you want to set this aside until it cools. It is going to turn clear. 
So just set it aside where, you know, it's not going to get spilled. And uh, we'll come back when it's cool. Okay, it's been about 20 minutes and everything has been cooled. I use either a meat thermometer or a candy thermometer. And you just test the temperature of the oil and your lye. And I usually like them about 95 to 100 degrees. So like I said, you got your oil here. And um, I used coconut oil, which was hard, so you know I melted it and then mixed all the oils together. Now you take your hand blender. <laughs> And you want to slowly pour your lye in. And just stir it up. And you just hand blender on low. soap you just want to do this until it emulsifies gets cloudy you don't want to do it until it thickens now soap makers call that trace to where you blend it you can either do it by hand with a whisk or a hand blender hand blender is a little bit easier but you just do this and on regular soap until you get what they call trace and that means that it gets thick very thick like pudding or custard like when you lift this up you can see like the trail you know it leaves a trace in your mixture but for pine tar you really don't want to do that because the pine tar thickens it so much so what you want to do then is just pour in your pine tar and start mixing it because like I said it's gonna thicken up now pine tar is really good it's a old-time soap from the Victorian days but it's really good for skin problems um, old remedies use pine tar for like psoriasis eczema and I don't know if you can see this, but it's thickening up like your pudding or custard. So you want to get that all stirred together. Now this particular recipe has a really good lather. Okay, so you stir that up. Now you want to leave your gloves on because soap mixture is caustic. Uh, with the lye in there until it is neutralized. Most soap makers will pour it in the mold and they will let it set overnight until it's cool and then they will take it out of the mold and cut it up but they will let it set for a couple of weeks until it's neutralized and then it can be used. So we're just going to put this in the mold. It's, it is starting to rain and the wind is coming up. We're going to move into the house. Now I have a cookie sheet here. And as you can see, I've poured it into the mold. And now I am smoothing it out. Now, like I said, most soap makers will let this sit overnight cool and then they'll cut it up and set it aside for a couple of weeks. Bonnie has come up with an ingenious idea, plastic wrap. So we're going to cover this with plastic wrap. We're going to take this then and put it in a 170 degree oven. Now what will happen is um, the pine tar 
it will start gelling in the middle and it kind of gets like bubbles and sometimes it'll like poof up and actually come out of the mold. That could mean that it's too hot. Your mixture was too hot. So, like I said, we're going to put this in the oven now. And what we're going to be looking for is it's going to start gelling. And all your soaps will do this. It gets this jelly look to it. And it will get to all corners of the mold. And that's what we want to look for. Is we want all of it gelled. Now I just wanted to pull this out of the oven real quick so you can see how it's starting to gel on the top and in the middle. So we want to wait until this is all gelled before we take it out. Now I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's pretty well gelled. Um, pine tar has more of an opaque texture to it, so it's kind of hard to see, especially when the plastic is fogging up, that it's all gelled. So we're going to be taking it out and letting it cool now. Okay, so our soap is cooled now. We've taken it out of the little wooden frame. Now what's nice about these silicone molds is they are really easy to remove. And even if you have a hard time, you can just peel them back and remove it. So you've got a block of soap here. And what we're going to do is we're going to take our knife. And you can get these at like Hobby Lobby or, you know, order them online. And we are just going to cut our soap. So I like to just take a ruler. I got a metal ruler here from Tandy. And I usually like to cut them at one inch. So we're just going to cut our soap. Then you can get a straight knife and just cut the edges off here. But as you can see, here's our pine tar soap. Now if you're interested in just buying my homemade soap, I'm going to put the link down below to our Etsy store. And uh, it's going to be a couple of days before I get the new batch of pine tar soap up there. But I do have a batch of the lemongrass that I'm going to be putting on there and listing. And this is a very faint natural um, essential oil, lemongrass, and hemp oil. I don't like to have a lot of um, heavy, strong fragrance because, like I said, I have a lung problem. But there you go. That's how you make the pine tar soap. And it has a very unique smell. Now, to make sure your soap is safe, you can get these little pH test kits and you can see it's got the little pictures there of what shade it should be. You can open it up and there's these little strips inside. And I usually cut them in thirds because you really don't need that much. But you just take a little bit of water and you just make a little bit of a lather here on top of your soap. And you take your strip and just put it through the lather. Now your pine tar soap is going to be a little bit higher in pH than a, what a normal regular soap would be. Regular soap, homemade soap, you want it in your 7 to 8 range. Now the pine tar, as you can see, is more like a 10. It's going to run you about 9 or 10. But it is still safe to use. So, thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day, and have fun making your own soap. Bye.